right so welcome back and in this episode we will discuss functions and loops like for loops while loops do while loops and we will also discuss the built-in loop function in an array okay so go and type a folder i'm just gonna name this as functions and loops okay so inside this folder as usual go tayo ng index.html natin and our main.js Okay. And then we'll just create our blank HTML structure. And we're just gonna name this as functions and oops. Okay, so let's just make h1 here. Copy lang natin to para may text lang tayo sa browser natin. And then we will link our main.js by using the script tag as usual main.js right so preview lang natin sa browser using a live server palabasin lang natin yung console reload lang natin okay so let's go on to our main.js i-collapse lang natin to para mas malapad yung coding screen natin okay so comment lang natin dito functions oops gawin natin capital so functions, this is just a block. Of codes you define that will execute when you call it. Okay? So to create a function, we will use the function keyword. So just like this, function and then your function name, let's say you define it as name addition and then enclose most of brackets and then parentheses just like that all right so my runtime function addition and gagawa tayo ng code block sa loob dito i'm just gonna use the const keyword here so let's say num1 equals 10 and then say num2 equals 5 and then result equals num1 plus num2 and then we will return res here for result try to think console that lag dito sa baba okay so i console not lag natin yung function natin na addition and then brackets like that so press control s on your keyboard now we have 15 here okay so that means we have 10 plus 5. Itong code na to ang nag-execute. Itong code block na to. So sa function, magsa-stop lang yung code execution ng code block mo pag na-reach nyo na itong return na keyword dito. So anywhere after return, di na siya may-execute. Let's say, nag-document that right ka pa dito. Say for example, you type here 15. Press Ctrl S on your keyboard. Or gawin na lang natin siyang 20. Or at least different sa console. So press control S on your keyboard. Wala kang nakikita ang 15 dito. Kasi nga yung function, masa stop lang siya pag na siya na yung uh, return. So what if ilagay natin siya before return dito sa taas? Ganyan. Press control S, you should have say 20 here ito. Okay? So tandaan nyo yan. Alright, so we can also add a parameter in a function. So itong mga parameters or arguments na to, Ito yung sumasalo sa mga values na pinapasa natin after nating i-define or i-function call yung function name natin na addition. Ito, tawag dito is function call. Ibig sabihin, tinawag mo yung function na yun. Okay? So, let's have an example here. Function. And then, student name. Yan. And then, dito, maglagay tayo ng first name. Ito yung tinatawag na parameters or arguments. And then, last name. Okay, ganyan. So, dito sa loob, let's say return first name plus last name. Right, so let's try to console that log here. Oops. And then dito, since may dalawa tayong parameter dito, something's wrong with the spelling, right? Should be first name and then last name. First name dito, last name dito. 
Okay, so since may dalawa tayong parameters or arguments sa taas dito sa student name na to. Ngayon, let's say nag-function call ka na dito. Ganyan. Dito mo ngayon, ipapasa yung values mo para dito sa function mo. So let's say for example, yung first name mo is Pinoy. Uh, And then yung last name mo is Dev. Oops, should be string. Okay, so press control S on your keyboard. Now you have Pinoy Dev here in the console. I'm just gonna add some space like that. Okay. So, ganyan siya guys. Of course, pwede mo siyang i-initialize dito. Let's say, dito mo ilagay yung Pinoy. Pwede mo rin ilagay yung uh, dev dito. Ganyan. Tanggalin natin to. So, press control S on your keyboard. Now, you still have Pinoy dev here in the console. Oops. Okay. Of course, pwede mong i-override na to kasi nga, initialization lang to eh. O, dineclare mo lang siya na default as Pinoy and Dev. Pero, once na nilagyan mo siya dito ng, let's say, American. And then here, let's say, developer. Kung magyayari, since naka-default to, pero nagpasa ka ng value dito, itong Pinoy at Dev na to, marireplace siya dito. Okay? So, let's press Ctrl S. Now, we have here American developer. Ganyan natin lang space. Okay? So, pwede siyang ganyan. What else we have? We can also return a function to a variable as an assignment. So, for example, may variable tayo dito. Let's say, cons. Uh, div name. And then dito, instead na maglagay ka ng value, function yung ilagay mo dito. So, let's say, function. So, since nag-declare tayo ng variable dito, maglalagay tayo ng semicolon dito. Kasi nga, variable to, di ba? So, dito sa loob yung codes mo. Let's say, for example, uh, lagay tayo ng arguments dito or parameter. Uh, first name. Actually, copy na lang natin ito sa taas. Okay. In the same, we will return the first name and the last name. Try to console that lag here. Just copy this one. Okay, ganyan lang. <coughs> Excuse me. Since may dalawa tayong parameters dito, which have first name and last name, lagay din natin dito. So, let's say Pinoy. And then Dev. Okay, so ganyan. Press Ctrl S on your keyboard. Now we have Pinoy Dev in the console. Okay, lagyan natin ng space dyan. So, that's how you assign a function to a variable. So, in JavaScript, we call this one as function expressions. That means you assign a function into a variable. Okay? Alright, so let's make some example for a nested function. That means a function, and then may function pa siya sa loob. So, let's say, for example, function. I'm just gonna name this as outer function. Okay, ganyan. And dito, maglagay din tayo ng text. I'm just gonna use the cons keyword. Cons sum text. Equals. Let's say the sum is. And dito sa baba, ang pangalawang function natin. So, function inner function. Ganyan. I'm just gonna use the console.log here. Console.log. And then we will sum. Let's just sum here num1 plus num2. And then magpapas tayo ng arguments dito or parameter na num1 and num2. Okay? Oh, we forgot to put the sum text here. So sum text plus num1 plus num2. Okay? So, para ma-execute mo tong inner function mo, kailangan mo siyang i-call dito after ng closing brackets or closing parenthesis ng inner function mo. So, kailangan mo siyang i-call dito, which is inner function. Ganyan. Okay? Try natin i-console.log dito or i-call na lang yung function kasi may console.log na tayo dito eh. So, we can just directly call the function to display to the console. So, other function, we will just put our num1 here, which is 80. 
Kasi may num1 tayo na parameter dito. And then our num2, let's say 10. Okay, so press Ctrl S on your keyboard. Now, oops, let's add some space here. Okay, so now we have the sum is 90. Because we have 80 and 10 here. Okay, so that's how you create a nested function. So sa nested function, tandaan mo lang, yung inner functions mo, kahit ilang functions pa yan dyan, may access siya lahat sa mga variables dito sa taas, sa outer function mo. Okay, kasi ito part pa to ng outer function, di ba? Itong sum text. Kasi nga, nasa loob siya ng code block ng outer function. So tingnan nyo, ginamit natin siya dito sa loob ng inner function. Pwede siya. Pwede mo rin gamitin ang variables or arguments na nilagay mo sa outer function mo. Ito. So kung mapapansin nyo dito, in-access natin siya dito sa inner function natin. Ito. So that is how nested function works. We also have closure. So it is very important. Comment lang natin. Closure. Para lang siyang functions or nested functions. Pero ang kinagandahan nito, kahit na na-execute mo na yung outer function mo, yung inner function mo, pwede mo pa rin siyang i-access. Okay? So, gawa tayo ng example dito. Define lang natin. This is just a function that has access to its parent function scope and remembers its variable. Even if the scope is already closed. Okay. Right, so let's sum some example with closure here. Function. Let's say addition. Ganyan. I'm just going to add one parameter here. I'm going to use num1. Oops. And dito sa loob, gawa ulit tayo ng function, but this time, we will return it immediately by using the return keyword. See, like that. And then your function. And then yung function name mo. Let's say add me. Okay. So that means add me, we will add any number to num1. So let's see here num2. Ganyan. Right, so let's just sum the, our num1 plus num2 here. Ganyan lang. So, try natin i-output sa console. Gawa lang ako ng bagong variable dito. I will assign this function to a variable. Let's say, get add me equals addition. Oops. So, since may num1 tayo ng parameter, maglalagay ko dito ng num1, ng value para sa num1. Let's say 5. So, at this moment, ibig sabihin, na-execute niya na yung addition of function natin. Pero, nilagay natin siya sa get add me. So, ang kinagandahan ng closure, guys, kahit na na-execute na itong addition na function natin, pwede mo pa rin i-access itong admin na function sa loob. So, let's say, for example, let rest equals, and then itong git admin na to, kasi nga nandyan na yung function natin, addition, di ba? And then, let's say, maglagay tayo ng isang value dito, another value. Let's say, 6. Try lang natin i-output sa console. Dot log. Say rest here. Okay, so press Ctrl S on your keyboard. Now we have 11 here in the console. So, ibig sabihin, napipreserve yan yung value ng arguments mo ay yung parameter mo dito, which is num1. Ito yun, di ba? 5. So, kahit na-execute na natin yung buong addition of function, kasi nga closure siya, pwede mo pa rin i-access ang function sa loob, which is ito. So, nag-add tayo ng 6 dito, which is our num2. That is why we have 11 in our console here. Okay, so that's how closure works. Right, so we can also create a function and then run it at the same time. So we call that one as ifis. Comment lang natin. Ifis. Pronounced as ifis. Ganyan. So ito, a function that can run at same time. So ibig sabihin, pwede mo na siyang i-run agad kahit di ka na nag-function call. Ito yung mga function call, di ba? So like, may addition tayo dito, ano yung function call tayo dito. So let's say, copy na lang natin itong, itong function na to. Copy lang natin. So paste natin dito. Hindi mo na kailangan maglagay ng function name. So tanggalin natin yan. Ganyan yung format niya. And nandito sa labas, maglalagay ka ng open bracket. Ganyan. And then, i-close mo din siya dito. 
So ngayon, magtataka ka, paano mo siya i-call na wala siyang function name? Paano mo siya i-run? So in order to do that, dito sa pinakahuli, maglalagay ka ulit ng open and close brackets. Ganyan. So ibig sabihin nito, ito yung parang function call mo na. So kinreate mo yung function at the same time ni-run mo na siya. Ito. So try natin mag-console.log na lang dito. Console.log. Ulit na lang natin yan para ma-output siya diretso sa console. Okay, so press control S on your keyboard. Now we have 15 here. So that is 10 plus 5. That's how if this works. Okay, so we'll proceed with loops or looping. Okay. Let's try with four loops first. So so for loop, gamit ka lang ng four na keyword. And then open and close brackets. And then open and close parentheses. Okay. So, dito sa loob ng brackets mo, mayroon tayong tatlong statements dito. The first statement is the initialization. So, let's say initialize natin yung x equals to 0. And then, yung second statement mo, separate mo lang siya sa semicolon, ganyan. Let's say if x is less than or equal to 10. So, itong second statement, ito yung tinatawag na condition. And then, your third statement is the increment expression. So, let's say x plus plus. So, that means, ang x mo mag increment siya until na ma-reach niya itong 10, which is, we put here, less than or equal to 10. Okay? So, console that lag lang natin dito. And let's say here, counter. And then, yung variable natin na x. So press Ctrl S on your keyboard. Now we have here counter 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. So nag-stop siya sa 10 kasi nga yung condition natin is less than or equal lang siya sa 10. Okay? So what if gusto kong i-increment yung loop na hindi pa nakarating dito sa console.log? Let's say for example, gusto ko nang i-increment ang loop na di pa na-display itong counter 6. So let's say for example, if din yung x mo is equals to 6, and then, maglalagay na ako ng continue dito. Type ka lang dyan, continue. Okay? So, once yung x mo is equals to 6 na, since may continue tayo dito, ibig sabihin, magko-continue na yung loop mo. So, di na siya dadaan dito sa console.log mo. So, let's try to press control S. Now, nawala na yung counter 6 natin dito. Kasi nga, nag-continue tayo dito. So, di na niya dinaanan to. Okay? So, what if gusto kong stop yung loop totally kahit di pa na-reach yung condition natin? So, ibig sabihin, kahit na yung x natin dito, hindi pa siya equal to 10, let's say sa 8 pa lang, stop ko na siya, or 6 or 7, gusto ko na siyang stop totally, so pwede din yun. Okay? So, comment lang natin to. And then, try lang natin siyang stop dito sa baba. You can just type if. So, gusto ko siyang stop when x is equal to 8. Type ko lang x is equals to 8. And then instead of continue, I will just type break here. So this will break the loop. Press Ctrl S on your keyboard. Now we only have counter 8 here. Okay? Now let's try a nested loop. Ibig sabihin may loop ka na, and then sa loob nun may extra loop ka pa. So let's have an example here for, let's say x is equals to 0 or equal to 1, x is less than or equal to 10, then x plus plus. Okay? So ngayon, try natin yung output dito naman sa browser natin instead of the console. So I can just type here document that right. Ganyan. And then kung anong gusto mong ilagay sa browser mo. So, let's say maglagay ako ng ganyan. And then a BR tag after that. BR tag is just a line break. Okay. Ibig sabihin, the next document will be printed after this. Ngayon, gagawa tayo ng inner loop natin. So, for, say for example, let's use y instead of x. Let y equals 1. y is less than or equal to 10. 
then y plus 5. Okay? So, ngayon, ito yung outer loop mo, ito yung inner loop mo. Alright? So, try natin output yung y natin. So, document.writeln. Ganyan. So, baka magtataka kayo, anong pinagkaiba ng right sa right ln? Itong right ln, mag a siya ng extra line after sa word mo. So, right ln, ganyan. And dito sa loob, try natin i-output yung y mo. Ganyan. So, press Ctrl S in your keyboard. Now, you have here, oops. Okay, so, we need to add another document that right after the inner loop dito. Nalagay tayo ng BR dito. So, line break. Ganyan. Oops. Okay, so, press Ctrl S in your keyboard. So, now we have our inner loops here dito. Ito yung nasa inner loop natin. At ito naman yung nasa outer loop natin. Alright, so nangyari dito, pag execute ng loop, nag-display agad tayo ng document.write sa browser natin. Ito, ito siya. Di ba? And then dito, yung inner loop natin, magra-run siya until na-reach niya yung condition natin dito, which is y is equals to 10. So that means pagdating dito, it will print y, which is 1. Ito siya, 1. And then since y is less than or equal to 10, nagwa y plus plus tayo dito. Ngayon, ang y natin, nagiging 2 na siya. Ipiprint niya ulit, ito yung 2. And so on and so forth. So once yung y is na-reach na niya yung condition natin dito, which is y is equals or less than or equals to 10, ngayon, mag-execute na siya dito. Itong document that write na to. Which is our BR tag. So after dito sa 10, may BR tayo. So that means yung next na document na ipiprint mo, is mamumove na siya sa next line. Okay. So, since yung x natin, which is 1, is less than or equal to 10 pa, didisplay niya ulit ito. Maglulop siya ulit. Which is, ito na siya. Diba? And so on and so forth. Hanggang matapos itong x. Or hanggang ma-reach ng x yung condition niya. Okay? Of course, pwede rin natin i-execute dito yung continue and break natin. So, let's say for example, if y is equals to C8. And then type mo lang dito, continue. Right? Press Ctrl S on your keyboard. Now, nawala na yung 8 natin dito. So, the same concept, di ba? So, we can also break the loop. Of course, the same pa din. If, let's say, for example, Y is equals to 8. Then, ganyan lang, di ba? Break. Press Ctrl S in your keyboard. Now, instead of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 only. Pero na-notice ninyo dito, ang na-break natin is itong inner loops lang. So, what if gusto kong i-break yung outer loop? Ito, kahit nandito pa ako sa inner loop. Okay? Ngayon, gagamit tayo ng tinatawag na labeling. Ano ba tong labeling? Big sabihin, maglalagay ka ng label dito. Say, for example, break outer. Ngayon, yung label na yan, gagamitin natin dito sa loob ng inner loop. Comment lang natin to. Let's say, if y again equals to 8. Okay, so dito sa loob, type lang tayo brick. And then, lagay natin yung label natin sa taas. So, brick outer. Ganyan. Press Ctrl S. Now, once yung y is equals to 8 na, Ito, di na natin na console that lag kasi nag-break na tayo dito, di ba? So, di na display yung 8 dito. Pero once yung y is equals to 8 na, na-break na tong inner loop mo, na-break pa tong outer loop mo. So, that's how you use label. Okay? Now, let's proceed to while loop. So, comment lang natin dito. While loop. And then, declare lang tayo ng variable dito. Select x equals 1. So, so while loop, ganito lang. While Open and close brackets, and then open and close parentheses. Ganyan. So, dito sa loob yung expression mo. So, let's say while x is less than or equal to 10. And then, itong code block na to, sa loob, dito, mag execute siya. So, console.log. Let's try to output x here. Okay. And dito sa baba, 
x plus plus. Okay? So, while x is still less than or equal to 10, mag e x plus plus siya dito. Press control S on your keyboard. Now, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 here. Of course, we can also create a nested while loops. Comment lang natin. So, let's reinitialize our x here. x equals 1. And then the same, copy lang natin to. Ganyan. While x is less than or equal to, let's see, 5. Okay. And dito sa loob, ilalagay natin yung pangalawang while loop natin. But before that, magdi-declare ng variable dito. Sa pang variable, let's see, y equals 1. Okay. While, gamitin natin yung y mo. While y is less than or equal to x. Ganyan. So, instead na nag than or equal to some numbers here, like 5, 10, ginawa natin, ginamit natin yung variable natin dito sa outer while loop natin, which is x. Okay? So, lagay natin dyan. Dito sa loob, mag-print tayo. Let's say document. That right. Right lang. Then, let's say magpiprint tayo dito ng uh, character na ganyan. Oops. Okay. Tanggalin natin itong console.log natin. So, mayroon na tayong while loop. Mayroon na tayong outer while loop. Mayroon na tayong inner while loop. So, gawin natin. Oops. Kailangan pa natin ng y++ dito. Diba? Okay. And dito sa baba, magpiprint ulit tayo ng document.write. But instead of character, print natin yung BR na tag natin. Which is ganyan. Ibig sabihin, yung susunod na mga text na ipiprint mo, mapupunta na sa next line. Let's try to print this one. Alright, so we have here the characters that we print. Mm, try natin mag-add ng BR pa sa taas. Para ma-print lang to sa baba. Okay? So I think dito na dito siya Ayan, nandiyan na siya sa baba. Okay? So, nangyari dito, ito yung outer loop natin, ito yung inner loop natin. So, lahat ng variable ng outer loop mo, pwedeng gamitin dito sa loob ng inner loop mo. So, dito ginamit natin yung y, which is part pa sa outer loop mo, and then ginamit din natin yung x, which is part din ng outer loop mo. So, while y is less than or equal to x, di ba y is 1? So, while 1 is less than or equal to 1, Kasi x din yung 1. Mag-exec yung document that right natin. Then nag y++ tayo. Na-stop yung y loop. Kasi yung y na 1 is equals na sa x na 1. Okay? Ngayon, mag-loop ulit yung outer loop mo. Nagiging 2 na yung x mo. And then dito, na-reset yung y natin. Nagiging 1 siya ulit. So kasi nga na-reset yung y. While 1 is less than or equal to 2. Kasi 2 na yung x mo, di ba? Kasi nag plus plus tayo dito. Ngayon, magpiprint siya ng dalawang beses. And then, tatlo, and then, apat, and then, hanggang lima. So, kasi nga, yung expression natin dito is, yung x mo is less than or equal to 5 lang. Magsa-stop na siya. Okay? We also have a do-while loop. Do-while loop. So, declaring tayo ng variable dito. Let's reassign our x. Oops. Was to 1. So, ang format ng do while loop is ganito. Do. And then, open and close parenthesis. And dito sa baba yung while loop mo. Or pwede mo rin idugtong dyan while. Usually, dito siya nilagay. While, ganyan. So, while x is less than or equal to, let's say, 10. So, ito yung expression mo. Dito sa loob yung code blocks mo. So, let's say, while x is still less than or equal to 10, Mag-execute tayo ng code dito. Console.log Okay? So, type lang natin dito. Counter. And then, yung value ng x. Dito. Plus x. Ganyan. And then, below that, mag x plus plus ka. Ganyan. Okay? So, press Ctrl S yung keyboard. Now, we have here counter 1, 2, 3, until 10. Okay? Pero, ang pinagkaiba nito... Kahit na yung x mo is 
greater than 10 na, may execute pa rin to. Okay? So, let's say, for example, yung 10 mo gawin nating uh, 11. So, press control S on your keyboard. Kita nyo dito, <laughs> nagiging counter 11 siya. So, na-execute pa rin to. So, ito yung pinagkaiba ng uh, do while loop. Comment lang natin dito. Will always execute even if the condition is not met. Okay? So, kanina nag-mention tayo na may mga methods yung arrays na looping. So, discuss natin dito. Let's try to loop an array. Alright, so let's create our arrays. For example, const, then ml heroes equals side brackets. And then yung value natin dito, let's say Lila. And then yung second value natin, oops, say uh, gourd uh, alucard uh, hellcard okay so meron na tayong array ngayon kung i-loop natin siya we can use the for loop Ganyan. so for let initialize lang natin counter equal 0 and then yung counter is list done uh, ml heroes ito pwede natin kunin yung length ng ml heroes natin by using the length property ganyan and then counter plus plus so ibig sabihin maglo-loop siya until ma-reach niya yung length ng Arrays natin, which is ito, 1, 2, or 0, 1, 2, 3. Okay? So, dito sa loob, try natin mag-console.log. Console.log natin yung uh, ML heroes. And then, yung variable natin na counter. So, ganyan. Press Ctrl S on your keyboard. Now we have here Lila, Gord, Alucard, and Hellcard. Okay? So that's how you loop arrays. Pero yung preferred na version ko na mag-loop ng arrays is yung built-in na for loop mismo ng array. Okay? Comment natin loop an array using its built-in uh, for each function. Try natin in loop yung email heroes natin, email heroes. And then that for each ganyan. And dito sa loob, maglalagay ka ng function call mo. So let's say for example function. Okay. So dito sa loob, magta-type ka ng parameter mo. So you can type any name you want, but I'm just going to type here as hero, which is the singular for email heroes. And then, magkukonsole.log tayo dito. Console.log. Okay? So, ibig sabihin nito, lahat ng value ng email heroes mo, niloop mo siya using for each, and then pinasa mo dito sa function mo na may parameter na hero. So, ngayon, para ma-display natin yung values ng email heroes natin, ito na yung gamitin natin, yung email heroes. Okay? So, paste mo lang dito. Press Ctrl S on your keyboard. Now, we have here again, Lila, Gord, Alucard, and Hellcard. So, napakalinis tingnan, di ba? Compare dito. So, I prefer using this way. Okay? So, we can also add a second parameter here. So, di ba dito, may parameter tayo, yung value niya. Ngayon, pwede tayong magdagdag ng second parameter dyan. So, copy lang natin. Let's try to add a second parameter. Add second parameter which is the index of the current array so let's see here uh, let's try index okay but you can also change whatever you want you can type here num okay so try natin yung output dito sa console okay so gawin natin template literal si to using backtext. 
And dito, try natin i-output yung index natin. Which is, we name it as num. Ganyan. Colon. And then yung value natin, which is hero. Okay? So, ganyan. Hero. Diba? Press control S on your keyboard. Now, we have our index on the left. And yung value natin ito. Okay? I can rename this to index. No problem. Oops. Palitan din natin ito ng index. Okay? Oops. Why hero? Should be index. So, you can put any name you want here. Okay? Aside from that, you can also add another parameter or the third parameter. Copy lang natin. Add a third parameter. Okay? So, tawag dito yung actual na array mo, which is the actual arrays. So, dito, type ka lang, let's say, array. So, as we mentioned before, pwede kang gumamit ng kahit anong pangalan dito. Okay? So, console.log natin. Console.log. And then, yung array. Ganyan. Press control S on your keyboard. Now, we have our arrays here. We also have the map method. So, map method. Okay? So, purpose nito, this is used to apply a function on every element in an array and returns the new array. Okay? So, let's say for example, array 1 equals the lagay tayo ng value dito 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. After that, gawa tayo ng panibagong array. Say, array 2 equals and then type lang tayo dito yung array 1 natin sa taas. Then that map. Ganyan. And dito sa loob, yung function natin. Kasi nga, used to apply a function, di ba? So, gawa tayo ng function dito. So, just type function. And we will add a parameter here. Si num1. Ganyan. And dito sa loob, let's try to return uh, num1 times, let's say, 5. Oops. Okay. So, kukonsol.log lang tayo dito. Then, i-output natin yung array 2 natin. Okay. So, press control S on your keyboard. Now, instead of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, we have here 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. So, ang ninyari dito, ni-return niya yung array 2 natin which is the map of array 1, but in-apply niya itong function na to. Okay? So, num1, which is 1, times 5, that means equals 5. And then the second element of the array, which is 2, times 5, we have 10. And then the third element, which is 3, times 5, equals 15, and so on. Okay? So, it applies a function to every element of an array. So, that is how map function works. Okay? We also have a for in loop. So, we basically use this for objects. Let's type here loop. An object. Using for in. Okay. So, gawin tayo ng object dito. Alam nyo na yun, di ba? Cons students equals let's say id 25 and then name say pinoy dev and then let's have our age here let's say 120 okay so for in ito lang 4 okay ganyan but dito sa loob yung expression mo let's say let then yung variable mo let's say student in students, which is yung objects mo. Okay? And dito sa loob, let's just say console.log. Then let's just make this as template literals. And let's say student. 
Nakikita tayo ng colon dito. And then, students, which is the object, you close it with open and close brackets. Lagay mo yung student dito. Ganyan. Press Ctrl S on your keyboard. Oops. Something's wrong. Ah, this must be dollar sign. Press Ctrl S. Now we have here students object. The ID and the value. Okay. So kasi pag ganyan lang nilagay mo, ID lang yung lalabas. Or key lang yung lalabas. So that's how you use for in loops. So I think guys, hanggang dito lang muna yung video natin. Sa next episode, i-discuss natin yung window object. And then right after that, magsimula na tayo sa DOM manipulation and DOM selectors. Okay? So thank you for watching and please subscribe to our channel. Para marami pa tayong mga tutorials na ma-upload dito sa channel na to. Alright?